focus is the point at which waves meet, rays meet, waves and rays which have been moving towards one another meet. That's in physics. But in the context of this discussion, focus means giving everything you have and everything you are to one thing, to a particular point. Focus means giving all your attention, giving all your emotions, giving all your thoughts, giving everything you have and everything you are, giving every cell in your body to one thing, to a particular point. Your attention, your thoughts, your emotions, the cells of your body all move as it were towards that particular point. In Indian history, in Indian mythology, one comes across innumerable men and women who did mighty deeds. If you want a one word explanation for this, if you want a one word answer, to the question how they were able to do it. The answer is, the explanation is, focus. Indian civilization, Indian culture, Indian traditions systematically inculcated focus in individuals. Perhaps I was wrong, perhaps I'm wrong in saying just focus. It would have been better to say autofocus. Autofocus means automatic focus. A camera with autofocus adjusts the focus by itself, depending upon the needs of the occasion. It does not have its focus to be adjusted manually. Indian civilization, Indian culture, Indian traditions systematically inculcated autofocus in individuals, rendering, rendering them capable of carrying out truly mighty deeds. I say autofocus because they never had to consciously focus on anything. Whenever the need arose, they, they would focus automatically. It was a sort of second nature to them. They did not do anything without focus. They always were able to focus very effectively and very automatically Indian summers can get very, very hot. Yet the sun by itself is almost never capable of burning the dry grass even at the height of summer. But if you hold a lens and focus the sunlight, the heat of the sun on a little bit of dry grass, it immediately catches fire. This is the power of focus. Swami Vivekananda said, I quote, all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. Unquote. I repeat, all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. Unquote. The first lesson is from the Mahabharata. Drona, the great teacher, asked his pupils, the Pandava and the Kaurava princes, to bring down a bird on a tree 
with an arrow. As each Pandava prince, as each Kaurava prince took aim, Drona asked him what he saw. The reply of each prince was more or less the same. The prince saw the tree, the branches, the leaves, the other birds, and also the bird which had to be brought down. Drona ordered the prince not to shoot. Finally, it was the turn of Arjuna. Arjuna replied that he saw only the eye of the bird. Not even the whole bird, only the eye of the bird. This is the great lesson on focus. You should see your goal alone. Not even your entire goal, but the core area, but the core area of your goal. This lesson is also from the Mahabharata. Arjuna was having his supper one night when a gust of breeze blew out the lamp in whose light he was having supper. Arjuna continued eating his supper in the dark. Then it occurred to him that if he could have his supper in the dark, if he could eat in the dark, why could he not shoot in the dark? He decided to practice archery each night. One day his teacher Drona came across him practicing with a bow and arrow at night. Drona was stunned by what the boy was doing. Arjuna explained what had happened. An overjoyed Drona decided to guide Arjuna in the art of shooting arrows in the dark. They practiced night after night and Arjuna became a master of using the bow and arrow in the dark. The lesson that we draw from the story is that what appears to be impossible can be made possible by sustained intensive practice. Practice is focus in physical form. Practice is focus in tangible form. There is nothing that sustained intensive practice cannot achieve. This is an amplification on the first lesson. Perhaps I should have said it earlier. It is not enough that you see your goal. You should not see anything else. You should be blind to everything except your goal. In the Mahabharata, Arjuna sees the eye of the bird. Equally important is the fact that he does not see anything else. In fact, Drona specifically asks Arjuna whether he sees the tree, the leaves, the other birds, Drona himself. And Arjuna categorically answers in the negative. It is not enough that you see your goal. You should be blind to everything except your goal. If you are preparing for an important examination, you should see the syllabus, the textbooks, the notes, the time frame of, of the preparation for the examination. That's very important. But 
Equally important is the fact that you should not see Netflix, Amazon Prime, your television set, your social media news feeds. You should be blind to everything around you except the examination you are preparing for. If you strictly follow a daily routine, it enhances your capacity to generate auto-focus. Auto-focus or automatic focus, as we have explained, is focus being carried out automatically and without any effort. In a camera, the focus is adjusted automatically and not manually if the camera is autofocus. If you go to bed at the same time, if you wake up in the morning at the same time, if you dine at the same time, if you start working at the same time every day, you draw the support of circadian rhythms to the work that you do. As a result, the focus that you have to carry out becomes second nature to you. Routine generates auto-focus. In India, we have always laid great emphasis on consuming the right diet. We have always believed that the food that you eat affects not just your physical self, but your whole self, that, effect, that it affects you on your mental, your psychological and your spiritual planes as well. Much of the food that you consume goes out as the waste of the digestive system and a small part of it is used to nourish your physical self, your physical body. But we in India have always believed that it is this food that plays a significant role in shaping your mental, your psychological, your spiritual self. When you consume alcohol or when you take an intoxicant, your mind becomes hazy. What does this show? This demonstrates that food has the power to influence not just your body but your mind as well. Taking the right diet is a very important step towards your goal of attaining complete focus. Now, what is this right diet? Well, that varies from individual to individual and from context to context. It depends on who the individual is, who the individual is, what is his age, what is his or her gender, what is the nature of the work that he does, what is the context in which he is cited. This is a complex subject by itself and I hope to discuss it in detail in a full-length video later. If there is one word which can be seen as a synonym for the spirit of India, it is meditation. Meditation is the key. Meditation is the conscious attempt to focus the mind on a particular point or a particular object for a considerable length of time. Meditation is the deliberate effort to mould the mind stuff, to mould the mind stuff, to attain the shape one desires and to maintain that shape for a considerable length of time. To begin with, you can try to meditate 
for short spells and you can then gradually increase the length of the meditation period. Ancient Indian texts say that the best way to begin a day is through meditation, is with meditation. Meditation in the Brahma Muhuta is said to be particularly significant and effective and auspicious. Brahma Muhurta, in a very general sense, is the time between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. If you can get up during the Brahma Muhurta and start the day with meditation, there cannot be a better way to start the day. Meditation will help you to strengthen your capacity to focus. Meditation will calm your mind. Meditation will drown the distractions. And meditation is the ultimate Indian weapon, the ultimate traditional Indian weapon to help you focus on your goal with absolute concentration.